Second heat already on the starting pontoons. And you see the line up there, Ireland in lane one, Emmett O'Brien and Brendan Dolan. Then the Germans, Peter Urig and uh, Ingo Euler in lane two. Siegel and Federbar of Austria, lane three. Saas and De Marco of Spain in lane four. Alf and Peterson of the United States of America, lane five. And Seitz and Virovic of Poland, lane six. Well, Robert, I'm full of admira admiration for this new starting procedure that uh, FISA have got underway for, for this championship. I haven't seen a full start yet. I don't think we've seen one so far. It's tremendously marked contrast, isn't it, uh, to last year when uh, one false start followed after another. And it, uh, it did reach the point when we had one race where all six crews taking part were awarded a false start. And I, I've never been seen that before. So a, a world record broken on that occasion. But uh, as you say, this, um, this new traffic light system, it suits the athletes and uh, it almost certainly suits the officials. So uh, it's obviously the way forward. Well, it gives the athletes the two things they want. Uh, certainty of procedure, so that it removes the variation in, in the, uh, with the human factor. Um, and it also enables them uh, to see very clearly when to get going. And the two things uh, add up to a very clean and efficient start, which is all anyone wants. I know watching Indianapolis last year and watching all those false starts, um, I, was, uh, I was very, very frustrated, to say the very least, and I'm sure the athletes were feeling significantly more than that. Anyway, the second semi-final of the men's lightweight doubles is uh, well underway now. And as you can see, once again, with this passive event, we've got some very close racing. Three crews going through there, through uh, 1,000 meters. It's Poland, we've got Germany, we've got Austria with Ireland only a little touch behind them. But only two to go through, just as we saw before. So there's a lot of racing left in this event, yes. If Lucerne form is anything to go by, it's the Austrians and the Germans currently in the lead who uh, should take the places. They were fourth and fifth, respectively, uh, six weeks ago. But um, Spain and America also taking part there at that Swiss regatta. They contested ninth and twelfth places in the small final. And in fact, it's the Poles and the Irish who failed to make the last 12. So all things considered, good performances here so far from the Poles and the Irish, and it, hanging in there well up with the leaders. If you watch the uh, Polish boat here, we've got a wonderful shot of it. You can see the stern of the boat, the back of the boat, bouncing in the water. They're nearly stopping at each stroke. So uh, these two men are pulling very hard to make up for those technical deficiencies. And they're keeping up with the two rather smoother, rather more elegant uh, Austrian and German pairs, particularly the Austrian boat. There's a wonderful shot of the stern of that boat. You can see it only slightly checking as the men come forward. Good sign means that they're getting that elusive, uh, that elusive ingredient, the easy speed that's required to push them through the middle of this course. Very high pedigree, these uh, Austrians, Wolfgang Siegel and uh, Gernot Federbauer. They're uh, out of the Austrian gold medal quad from Indianapolis last year. Decided to go it alone in the smaller class of boat and um, hopefully get an Olympic place next year in the double, which will be an Olympic event from 96. The 500 metres to go, and the poles pushing hard on these, uh, on these two crews. All three challenging for those two places to go through to the grand final. Ireland, again, not very far behind, as usual with the Irish crews, will be full of fight over this last 500. We saw earlier on their, their uh, lightweight men's quad just fail by a very, very small margin to get through. And we can see their confirmation through that 1500 meter point. The Poles lead the Austrians and the Germans, but very, very little in it. Spain just two seconds back. Uh, their crew, Sass and De Marco, unchanged from the last three years. Fourth placed at uh, Prague in 93. Again fourth for the Spaniards in 94 at Indianapolis. And so they'll be very, very keen to improve on that this time round. But 250 meters to go. And still it's the Poles who in the last 500 meters have taken the lead of this second semi-final. Poles are the one to beat and Austrians hanging on grimly Both. to the second qualifying slot up on Germany. Both Scullers and the Polish crew looking across, which is a dangerous thing to do when it's such a close race. The Germans in lane two have got to kick very, very hard over these last ten strokes to get their way through. It's going to be very close indeed, this one. The Germans giving it absolutely everything over these last ten strokes or so. All three crews winding it up as far as it can go. Whoever's going to be taking the stroke at the time is going to get through. Poles still slightly up on the Austrians. Germany trying to come through. Who's taking the catch? 
Oh! Well, oh, wow. it's got to be a photo. I think the Germans just got it by a whisker up on the Austrians. No doubt about first place, though. First qualifying slot to Poland, but a tremendous race. That's the, the closest race we've seen so far today. We have the replay. You can just see the Poles both go across there. The Germans just take the catch. Well, you split it, Robert. Less than the diameter of the bow ball, I think. We're going to have to wait for the official photo on that one. As they get, look, absolutely nothing to separate them. Uh, maybe a hair from the Germans, hard to say. Well, confirmation there. Look, in fact, it was Austria that took it. I cannot believe That's the interval was 1.3 seconds. That's so. Uh, uh, I think we can safely assume that that is an error.